Okay, so this is the head of the free sewing machine um, removed from the cabinet, obviously, and I just placed it on the bench and knocking off the big dirt here. Now, this thing was filled with lint and nothing moved. You could just jiggle the hand wheel, the balance wheel, uh, back and forth uh, by about... Um, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. You can, you can see in the previous video that it just jiggled a little bit, but nothing, nothing turned uh, or moved at all. So I'm using a uh, Supco oil. Um, I will get that. I'll, I'll put either links in the description or, or get a close up of it at some point so you guys can see what it is. Just, I had a motor rewound. At, a, at Gray Electric Motor Shop. And uh, they recommended this oil. It, it, it works very, very quickly. If, if it doesn't free something up, then generally I go to Croil, and I'll just put a drop of Croil on it, leave it overnight. Usually that takes care of it. Um, if that doesn't do it, the next step is the, is the oxyacetylene torch. But this stuff that they gave me, um, if it's going to work, it works more. It works very, very quickly. Uh, here you can see this when I when I remove the pillar side cover. Um, you'll see it, it. It it's frozen. Can't turn it. Won't move at all. Won't budge. You put that on there, and this is this video is four times faster than than uh, it, you know reality. It's it's sped up four times, um, but even so, in a couple of seconds. Uh, if this stuff is going to free something up, it's, it's amazing stuff. Uh, put a little bit on the spool pin. I'm going to try to take that spool pin out. I'm, gonna, I'm going to try and take everything off of this that I can take off of it and um, refinish it because it's just so rusted. Uh, the bed plates are, are uh, like a solid sheet of rust. They're all pitted. The chrome is all, I think, all shot on. I'm going to try with some fine steel wool, see if I can't... Uh, clean it up, but if I can, I'm just going to refinish it all. So here I'm removing the needle plate. <laughs> In my haste to uh, get at this thing, I was so uh, excited to start working on this thing um, that uh, I went to take the needle plate off here, and I didn't even realize that the needle is down. There's a needle in the bar. Uh, it's obviously down. It's frozen. It's frozen in a down position, uh, but I didn't even realize there was a needle in the bar there. So... Um, Got the needle plate off, and then I couldn't obviously remove it because it's around the needle. And for whatever reason, I didn't want to break the break the needle. Uh, here you can see <laughs> like another probably a walnut-sized wad of uh, lint came out of there. So I'm just oiling everything up, trying to trying to see what is frozen. I can't really figure out what's frozen here and I'm just tracing I'm looking at anything that moves and uh, the area that I'm pointing out there around that yoke and shuttle carrier are the only areas that aren't moving at all you know everything else in the train is at least jiggling all right got a little stick here and I'm just making sure I'm not going to knock into anything looking behind it looking all around it make sure you really get a get, a, get an idea if you're going <laughs> to you don't want to drive it into something and then I'm locking my hand off very firmly and just a little tap a -roo. Just tap it in. And I felt it move a little bit, so I tried it and I'm looking for other areas. Um, you know, it's tempting to just wail away on something, get it to move, but maybe you're not sure what else is binding. So I got the, the shuttle carrier got was freed up by that little tap. And now it's the needle bar itself that won't slide up through this bearing. That's now where it's sticking. So I looked around, found some 400 grit emery paper that was pretty shot. It had been used extensively. Um, the, the rule on sandpaper is to use it like it's free. It um, doesn't last very long at its you know, stated grit. The trouble with that is that it's not free. So I use it like it's free, but then I stuff it in a box. 
<laughs> and I keep it around and, uh, and then use it like it's used. So at 400 grit, all, all shot out and worn out, it was just perfect for sanding this needle bar. And I just went across the top of the bar, where you know, right where it goes into the bearing, just to see if that was the problem. And sure enough, it jumped up as soon as it, as soon as it got in there. That's a common problem with old machinery. The, the exposed part of a shaft uh, will often rust up, and that rust swells it up so that it can't then go back through the bearing or the bushing or the sleeve or whatever it's meant to, uh, to go through. So sometimes just cuffing off that rust will uh, free something up. So still looking, still looking, still looking. You could obviously just put a big pipe wrench on this thing and, and reef it around, but um, they're sturdy. You know, they're sturdier than you, than you would imagine. But there's no sense hurting anything. A little time, a little patience here. This is not uh, hard work. Just make sure you take a look. And I did get the um, shuttle out. So there I'm showing the, the shuttle. It's in great shape. It's not burred up. That's a little bobbin. I really like these shuttle machines. They're, they're uh, pretty interesting. They're, they're wacky. I'll show, I'll get a video of the shuttle going back and forth when it's all finished. They're pretty neat. That whole... So I went up to the shop and just got a little piece of hardwood. Here I'm showing uh, my thumbnail. See how easily it dents the, that piece. If you don't know the difference between softwood and hardwood, you can just try it with your thumb. And if your thumb dents it very easily like that, it's most likely a softwood. What was happening this rear bed plate was so stuck that it was actually splitting uh, the pine stick that I was trying to drive it out with. So I went up and got a piece of hardwood and drove it right out. Oak is actually hard enough that it'll can scratch up some things. Pretty, pretty hard wood. So I can see that shuttle carrier isn't going all the way back still. Uh, there's a cavity back there and it was just filled with a, with a piece of lint like, um, it was almost like a, like a heavy felt. It was so dense back there. So we got all that cleared out and it can go back and then just when the needle is just on its way back up, that shuttle should swing forward and grab the loop of thread. I'll show a video of this when I, when I get it all up and running. It's pretty, it's pretty neat to see that shuttle whipping around under there. So here I'm turning my attention to the balance wheel and the clutch mechanism. Pulling the set screws on the balance wheel. I want to get that balance wheel off. Just make sure that everything is okay back there. Um, I, I have to say that Free, uh, you guys did a great job on this clutch mechanism. This is much better than the Singers. Um, at, least, at least from what I've seen. This little knob has a little pin that goes into that notch. And when you pull that pin out, that motor pulley there, or the uh, balance wheel pulley rather, is completely free. So I got everything freed up pretty well. There's still a little catch in that pillar. Just ins inspecting in there, taking a look in there. Uh, the machine was out in the barn, so there was enough moisture to rust all the uh, chrome surfaces and all of that. But inside that pillar, it actually looks pretty good. There are bronze pieces in there. Uh, there's no rust. Everything looks pretty clean. So I'd, I'd rather not strip that out if I can help it. Coming back to this balance wheel, I'm uh, just showing this mechanism here, this clutch. At first, I thought this threaded out, and I was going up, I was going up to the leather shop actually to get a piece of leather to protect it so that I could put vice grips on it. It was in the in the other position, and I couldn't see uh, that it just pulled out. And I did see that little empty notch. And I was on my way to get leather uh, to put some vice grips on it and, and, and try tapping it free. And I was just thinking about that little notch while I was going to get the leather. I was thinking, why would they put that notch in there? You're not just going to cast a notch in there for no reason. And then it occurred to me that uh, it probably doesn't thread. It probably just pulls out. So I came back and I gave it a little tug. And I had soaked everything with enough penetrating oil by this point uh, that it just uh, popped right out. I was thrilled. 
So I'm really, really happy about that clutch mechanism. It's really neat. You just pull that little knob out and twist it, and, uh, and then you can wind your bobbin or whatever. So I, or whatever, I guess wind your bobbin's really the only thing you're going to do on this machine, unless you want to run that belt off to power something else. So speaking of bobbin winders, I figured it's time I turned my attention to that. I'm kind of going around, going around the whole machine. Uh, when you go to work on one of these bobbin winders, you really, really want to be careful about turning anything. Don't try to turn the, um, that's what I'm showing here. Don't try to turn the, any of the space where that, the one on the left is okay. That one, you, if you get some penetrating oil in there, the one on the left is just a plunger that holds the uh, bobbin. You could, you could probably turn that one, but the one on the right has a fine worm gear on it, and that gear drives a wheel with a heart-shaped cam. And if you go reefing on that, you could very easily strip some of the gear. Those gear teeth are very, very fine, and you could very easily strip some of those gear teeth. So uh, be really, really easy there. Uh, you know, just a little light. Just try it a little bit. Try it a little bit. And there are two screws on that um, heart-shaped cam the larger one in the center will pull that whole disc right out. So if it's really, really corroded and bad, you can just pull that whole assembly out. And that's what I ended up doing. Just ended up pulling that whole assembly out and uh, working on it separately. So rather than, than leave the bench, I just turned my attention to other, other parts of the machine and I'm just tapping again here. Just tapping. Uh, this is the stitch length lever that I was tapping on and uh, it had been it had been frozen up too which was causing binding uh, I got that freed up and now everything's really really moving well <laughs> still picking out lint I don't think anyone cleaned lint out of this thing for probably the last several years of its life and I believe if I had to make up a story and I do have to make up a story because we don't obviously know the story. Um, I believe that lint had built up to such an extent that it was getting into all the little cams, the feed cam. That's what I'm showing right now is that that's the cleaned up uh, and you can see how filthy it still is. There's still grit and grime all around it. Uh, but there was just lint just packed into the uh, area of that feed dog cam. And that's running in a you know, it's supported on both sides. So if you start jamming lint in there, there's just nowhere for anything to go. If you oil these machines and you clean that lint out regularly, you, you really, there's not much that can go wrong with them. Um, those are the two main maintenance points. The oil, of course, will, you know, kind of is sticky for that lint. So the lint can stick on it and then build up and then of course it you know, will wick through the lint and, and attract more lint and, and that's what happened in this case. It was just a solid mass under there. When I, when I removed I should have shown a still picture. I didn't think of it. Next, if I find another one that looks like this I'll, I'll put a still up. But when I took the uh, bed plate off it was just, <laughs> it was solid underneath the bed plate. You know, it was like there wasn't any opening underneath the machine. It was just solid, uh, dense lint. You couldn't, you could, you could even really push. You could, you could, you know, mush it with your finger, but not, not like um, it wasn't soft. You know, it was firm. So I'm oiling up. I think at this point I'm checking the um, stitch length regulator again and tracing the whole mechanism because there's still a little. I'm still not completely happy. There's still a little catch in there and I cannot, I just can't figure out what it is that's catching it. And I'm about 90% sure that it's in the pillar. <laughs> I really, for whatever reason, I'm just being stubborn. I really do not want to strip the guts out of that pillar because they look so good up in there. And, um, you know, I don't, I have no idea what I'm doing here. This is the first free sewing machine that I've worked on. Uh, I've worked on uh, two singers in the past, so I, I'm, I really have no idea what I'm doing here. 
I'm just uh, brand new at this. But I have, over the past uh, several decades, worked on machines of all types, uh, precision machines, you know, restoring uh, all types of machinery. And so I, I do kind of have a sense of where the problems come from. And trying to, that pillar is put in place with a cast in place pin and three screws. Um, and boy, I just have a sense that if you misalign anything in there, you are in for a real rough ride. Trying to get everything realigned and re and back on, you know, like the needle bar, for example, sits um, on a little wrist mechanism that has to be uh, in the right position, or the needle eye won't be in the right position when the shuttle goes to pick up the loop. So there's there there's a, there's a lot of little fine adjustments that could be made, and I don't want to make them up through that pillar. So I'm just being cranky and trying not to. Not to strip that out if I can help it, and it looks good in there. It's not like I'm. It's not like I'm doing a disservice to the machine by leaving it. It's uh, it's all clean up in there. You know, no lint can get back up under the pillar, and it's kind of protected from the weather a little bit more because it's in its own little enclosed space. That was the uh, feed dog. Everything is just caked with uh, black polymerized oil, so it's all going to go for a. Uh, it's all going to go for a, an alcohol bath. Let's see if I can't get all of that polymerized oil off. I, I'm not entirely convinced that any of the chrome is going to come back on this machine. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I've um, been considering a few different finishing options. All The, the black uh, paint is really peeled up. It looks pretty good in, in the picture because it's not, you know, you're not seeing a close-up and it's, um, you know, the light's kind of poor here. Yeah, it looks pretty good in that picture. You can't really see that the paint is, is really peeling off the, the base. So I found that one extra foot. I don't know what it is. If anybody knows what that foot is, you can leave a comment. It's like a left side only uh, with a little bit of a um, groove, almost like a rolled hem would have, but there's no, there's no plate to roll the hem. But it does have a little bit of a groove that... Uh, is not like a piping foot. It has a groove. That groove is on the top side of the foot. Uh, going after the tension assembly here, and something is not right. I tell you, uh, boy, talk about rotten in the state of Denmark. I, I think that little piece, um, and I apologize. I'm not. You know, I don't really have a video style here. I'm just developing uh, how I'm going to do all this. So I didn't. I was really just kind of talking th through the whole build because I didn't know if I wanted to just present it that way, but it's, it, was, it was an hour and 47 minutes of content, which seemed like way too much. Um, so what I'll probably do is end up speeding through most of this and then slowing it down in sections. But in any case, I think that black rubber disc is supposed to be under something. These are the um, tension wheels. They look pretty good. There's a little bit of rust on... on on the lower part where moisture you know kind of sat between them and what I'm probably going to do is just turn them over and put that rust up and that way uh, the smooth portion of the tension discs will be now I'm going to stainless uh, lily white oil you know sewing machine oil because I can't find that catch I, I really can't see this one I'm sort of pointing out there I cannot figure out what's going on in there. I tried to give you a look inside there. You see how good it looks? And they're bronze. That bronze slide is fine. Uh, it might be hanging up a little bit. Boy, it does not take much. A little burr, you know, if it was run without oil and that slide got a little burr on it, uh, would be all it, all it would take. And the um, raceway in there and the, and the bronze block are long enough. And it is only, all it's doing is transmitting the circular motion of the balance wheel pulley, the, the drive pulley, into vertical motion just to get down under that machine. So that's all it's doing. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be accurate, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, on time or anything. It's just, it's just a pitman arm. And so because of that, I decided to just oil it up and run it and see if I can't get through those burrs. I, I you know, as you could see in earlier clips, I really carefully checked everything to make sure that nothing critical was hanging up. Um, 
And that's a rugged enough piece back there. It's going to last, f you know, just forever uh, in this application. It's never going to wear out. So it, it may have been run without oil a little bit enough in there uh, to to cause it to uh, just burr up. Because as soon as I as soon as I ran it a bit with some oil, it, it felt better. So my plan now is to get this thing uh, cleaned up, back in the cabinet, belted and then just run it at high speed with oil in it for a while and see if that doesn't free everything up. You know, I know that none of the precision parts are, are in danger, uh, so sometimes that's a, that's a viable option. You can just run a machine in. You know, it's like a... I took the, the, the wrenches and all that were for the feed dog mechanism. Just take the feed dog mechanism off. That was filthy. Anything that's not right is coming off of this machine. I'm not, I'm not going to be worried about taking things apart if they're not right. I'm dropping the foot here. This is kind of neat. It's a slotted mechanism, um, which is kind of cool. So that little knurled wheel just threads down onto the foot, and then the foot just pops off. That's the, that's the little, um, uh, needle clamp mechanism. It was filthy. That needle clamp mechanism was, it looked like one solid mass and it should be two pieces. There's a collar and then the little, the little needle clamp that slides up onto the needle bar. And it was so, it was so messy. It looked like one uh, piece. So, get everything off. And so it's off with the bobbin winder. That's the um, cam follower that keeps the thread evenly on the bobbin winder. I took that off. And then you can see just that pull that center screw, that large center screw. Uh, we'll pull that wheel off. And behind, there's like a little fork behind there you go. There you see it. That screw right there is what holds it on. So you just pull that one. pulls out from the balance wheel side. And the... the winder comes right off. But there you can see, you barely see that there are teeth on that thing. They are very, very fine. That's why I decided to pull it instead of trying to work it back and forth and risk All right, so over to the parts washer. Just two drums with a sump pump down through them, and the bottom drum just has a little kerosene in it. Just pumps some kerosene through there. And we're just going to wash everything off. Uh, I have a little soft nylon brush, and I'm just scrubbing out all the all the um, caked on grease and all that kind of stuff. The kerosene just cuts it a little bit. I should mention that um, with the penetrating oil and with the kerosene, I did test a little spot just to make sure I wasn't going to eat off all the finish. Um, even though even though a lot of this finish is crap, I mean big patches of this finish like. Uh, you know, three and four inch diameter circles of this finish are, cra are alligated and coming off the substrate. I don't think it's going to last that long. Um, I, I Just out of principle, I want to preserve as much as possible. I, I may make the decision to just leave it. Uh, I don't mind the relic look, particularly when it's been cleaned and waxed. Um, I'm a big fan of just leaving as much original fabric as possible. If something's really just totally gacked, uh, you know, I don't mind sandblasting it and going back down to um, bare metal and then doing a custom paint job. It doesn't bother me at all on, a, on an antique. Uh, but this, you know, you don't see too many of these. And the decals are there, even though they've turned silver. Uh, yeah, how much hard use is it really going to get? It's going to be waxed up. So, so I did make sure that none of the oils that I was using were going to strip off finish. I've got the bobbin winder in hand and it's off to the machine shop. I don't have a set of screwdrivers in the wood shop that are fine enough to get into the screw. The slot of the screw is very very fine. Uh, down in the machine shop I have a set of gunsmithing screwdrivers I could carry the setup, I suppose, but 
I find that if I move tools between the buildings, I never know where they are. If I just leave them, then at least I know, <laughs> at least I know where they are 20% uh, of the time. So this has much, much finer bits in it. Here with that finer bit, I just uh, did like the thigh master maneuver. So I rest that part on one thigh, anchor my elbow onto the other thigh, and you can really uh, bear down to get some pressure in there. You can you can you can tap the screwdriver with the back of a hammer. That's what I do a lot of the time. Or I have an impact screwdriver if it's a heavy enough machine. The problem with that here is it's such a small part. You risk cracking the part. And the screwdriver is kind of a nice fine screwdriver. I don't want to go beating on that. All right, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a film guy, so I know the quality isn't great. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll see what I can do in the future. Uh, if, if you did like it, you got something out of it, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, my intention with this channel is to bring more of this kind of uh, content. So I want to I wanna do some in-depth restoration projects and really uh, sort of show and explain uh, what my philosophy is and how I'm, how I'm uh, approaching this. Uh, for instance, this thing, I, yeah, I've never worked on a free. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea how this thing worked when I started. Um, it, you can learn right along with me. And uh, for me, you know, it's been a blast. So I hope, I hope you're, uh, you're enjoying it as well. The, the plan now is to get this thing back in the cabinet, uh, put the belt on it, and run it at just top speed with some lubrication for a while. Try, see if I can break everything in. And then get it to stitch. And if I get to stitch and everything's good, I'll take it back out of the cabinet and uh, refinish the cabinet which is you know has some issues and uh, and then see about what I'm going to do for the finish. Um, you can see I did a little more on it. I started waxing it up and uh, you know it it's looking pretty good. I might just leave it as a, as a relic like that but the cabinet uh, definitely want to you know that that's a piece of furniture you're going to see when the sewing machine is not in use and it's kind of water stained and, and has some issues so uh, we'll address that. All right, and thanks again to the fellow who gave this to me. Um, it's a great little machine. I, I think I'm really going to enjoy selling it.